Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is TMI on ITV Network. On this segment, is tackling insecurity, the Peace Corps question. And I've been wondering, I've been hearing one or two things about the Peace Corps. What do they really stand for? What is this all about? Don't forget that right now, the bill has gone through the Green Chamber, which is the House of Representatives. Uh, the Red Chamber, which is the Senate, and is before Mr. President for him to put a final stamp talking about signing the bill into law and will be of effect in Nigeria. We are talking about this, tackling security and the Peace Corps question. I have the Deputy National Commandant Writer, yeah. or Yemike MD, or Yemike is in charge of training, isn't training it? Training and operations. Uh, training and operations. Thank you so much for having you join us uh, in the studio. On ITV Network, TMI. I appreciate your coming. Thank you for having me. All right. We face a series of security challenges in the country, both national, state level, and local government level. We have various security architecture trying to make sure that lives and properties are safe, they are conserved, they are protected. And here we are having almost like a new outfit, so to speak. I mean... Out of all the security architecture, where does the Peace Corps stand in the fight against insecurity? Anyway, um, Peace Corps of Nigeria is just like a new agency coming in, though it has been in existence for 24 years. And um, our role is uh, basically in charge of the youth. And uh, the, 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 uh, it's the youth that are the tools that are used for this crisis and uh, in insecurity. And um, I think the major aim we are coming to do is the area of information gathering. Information gathering, sensitization of the youth as we are giving out information for, uh, to the regular security agencies to take. But why we are also busy trying to sensitize the youth on the dangers of getting into violence. Mm, getting into violence. Into but but violence. So, so I was saying that this might just be a duplicity of function, that we have other security agencies doing this aspect you're talking about. So what's the major difference if it's not functional duplicity? Yeah, the, the major difference, okay, let's take at it. What is the role of the military? It's external aggression. Mm. We have uh, uh, immigration in charge of immigrants, custom in charge of uh, the, the borders. Mm. But the, ed the educational system that is a home where they breed our leaders of tomorrow is left porous. Because one, if you talk about uh, uh, juvenile crime, the law doesn't capture. Even if you go to the police, they say they cannot handle juvenile crime. So that area is uh, the, the room where we breed people, character molding, and it's left for us. That is why you see kidnapping, they go into school, kidnapping if the school now becomes where you breed courtism, they experiment different type of vices. Mm -hmm. So that place, that area is where the Peace Corps is going, is basically in education, sensitization and the molding of characters. Mm, molding of characters, education, sensitization. Yeah. Yeah. And you're talking about the targets are just the youths yes. and juveniles. Yes. So uh, apart from these two categories, you can, you, you, does it mean that you cannot go beyond the scope? No, the area we can go is getting these unemployed youths meaningfully engaged. Because one, we graduate thousands of youth, mm. no job creation. Mm. But this one, we get them out keep them meaningfully engaged, use them in various areas. Because one, we have, in, as part of the bill, is what we call tourist guard. Mm. And we take record of uh, uh, tourists coming in, mm. staying with them, attach officers to them to take them around and go back. Mm -hmm. Then we also have an entrepreneurship program where we are going to engage this youth in a very vast, large, mechanized farming mm. to keep them busy. Mm. So we have a lot of uh, uh, program then. It's also going to be a, 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 a kind of um, a broadband base where they can get officers, especially like if you want to do INEC, uh, want to go into the uh, electoral process, you, get, you tell us, we'll give you deploy officers mm. that you can use. Mm. And uh, also for other, like this um, census too, you can come there and say, okay, get this officer. So the major thing is once this youth are meaningfully engaged in all this, you see that it will reduce crime. 
Mm. Uh, so as they engage, we have officers in all the 744 local governments. No so, and <clears throat> one of the major weapons in fighting this crime is getting information. Once you get information and pass it, 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 is, it will easily be caught. Yeah. But getting information and managing the information is also a problem because sometimes some people don't feel safe giving information. You give information, they will, they will still go and tell them, yeah, you are the one that gave information. So this one is a, a trained group that you can get information, especially using uh, information technology. Mm. All right, now, in, in the aspect of aggression, uh, now, I mean that the, 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 the peace code are not to be engaged in any form of aggression because mm. you're getting some apparatus, mm. security apparatus, they are armed to the teeth to, like, fight, to repel insurgents. Does it mean mm. that doesn't really, uh, the, the, the peace code doesn't cover that area? No, the peace code doesn't cover that area. We have, the area we cover is giving information before, and that is what we call a, a warning signals a oh, warning signal signals. so you yeah, gather so intel you gather intel and pass then when it becomes worst after the the armed forces going then after the whole crisis the confident building will now mm. come in confident building trying to see how we go to communities mm. telling them the importance of living together and mm. see how we can and, and build that confidence. So let's say the major role is for mediation, mediation. so to speak. Yes. Not to combat not to or combat, not no. to like attack or mm. to protect by using arm. No, not to combat. We don't combat because we don't use arm. As it's getting information, sensitizing the youth, telling them the dangers of getting involved in all these uh, vices and confident building among communities. Mm. Uh, we don't carry arms, so we cannot combat. Wow. Now, so I was going to say that these other aspects of job creation, I mean, because we have all these, we have, uh, uh, I wouldn't want to mention names, you know, different kind of security mm. architecture. So for what you're saying right now, it's not a security outfit, is that what you're saying? Uh, what, when you say security out outfit, it's mm. not a security, we call it Youth Empowerment Program. Youth uh, Empowerment Program. Youth Empowerment Program. Okay, Uniformed Youth, youth Empowerment, Empowerment Program. program. Mm. So it's not security where we'll start going to combat, no. Mm. And uh, that, I think that is the area we're lacking more. Because one, when you, you uh, uh, start preparing funds yeah. to get weapons to fight your own people, that is not the best. The best is sensitize them, let them know the danger, keep them meaningfully engaged, mm. and this insecurity will go down. Because one, this youth that you left follow, spending for themselves. One, if you look at the pressure in the country today, somebody, you, somebody finished school after all these years, you have family, you cannot fend for them, you say graduate going to hawk uh, pure water and others just to survive. When the pressure is much, it, they can resort. And the, the, our elites, they're not helping matters. When you start flaunting wealth, showing all kinds of uh, uh, flamboyant lifestyle, and these people are watching, that is why you see them before you know it, they are out of frustration, go into it. So what we need now is sensitization, reorientation. Let us change our norms of reasoning, mm -hmm. our norms. Those days, if you, your family have a, 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 a criminal in your family, you look, they, will, they will want to uh, ostracize you from the family. Yeah, but today, they don't mind how you get your money. Even into crime, they'll give you chief tax title. Mm. So what we need is character orientation to know mm. the values, the norms that a real African have. All right, so, so you're saying that you're focusing on moral building moral to building. tackle insecurity? Yes. Wow. Because wow. that is the major part of it. We, we, how long are we going to continue by arm, killing our people? We need to get, bring them down. Sometimes when you discuss with them, you see the pressure they have, and nobody showing concern. Every wealthy man is looking after only his family. And then we are going to those days when we were young. If you see a prospect in any young man, you take that person up, even though that the child is not your family or not. But today you left them. So if they go back to crime. We all are still in danger. So what we need now is to bring them out, reorientate them, let them know the values of labor, uh, not just quick money, just quick money to 
to go and live a flamboyant lifestyle. Let us rebuild them, especially starting from the youth who are the leaders of tomorrow. Because as of right now, the youth we have at the end of affairs, they are even worse. Mm. So if we want to protect our future, we need to start from the roots to reorientate them. So for what you're saying, that there's no duplicity of functions. Everyone is just doing their own, yes. in their own perspective, yes. in their own ways. The big question now is what is keeping the bill to be assented into law because they're going through the National Assemblies now before Mr. President. Why the delay? The bill is, you know, the national the president has just has one month to so and I think just hopefully we are very optimistic, just having about two, three weeks. Uh, so we're very optimistic. The bill has been gotten um, attraction from a lot, both from the the presidency, the National Assembly, that are interested, uh, uh, they have vested interest in it. So definitely we're optimistic that we didn't learn two weeks time, mm. the bill will be accepted. Mm. Right, but I don't think that this will cause financial strain on the already strained Nigerian economy, having uh, another outfit that has to do with you know, getting morals to tackle security challenges. Do you think they can really bear the burden? You see, what the good thing about it is that um, Peace Corps is already established. We have our structures in all the states, all the local governments. We don't need, we don't need to come in again and start funding by a building of it. So the financial burden won't be much mm -hmm. because we have regular officers and we have volunteers. The regular and officers and volunteers. Volunteer. Scrib is different shape between these two categories. Regular officers are officers we use in direct labor and they are being paid. Volunteers are professionals mm -hmm. who have various skills because in one of our bills, one of our objectives, mm -hmm. we are going to uh, we are going to train youth, get youth out of the street, train them, give them skill acquisition and also empower them to go out. So that is also a way of getting them out. So these professionals who are professional in different f fields come in to assist in training them and in empowering them. So those professionals are called volunteers. Mm -hmm. We only call, we bring them in when the need arise. Mm -hmm. uh, there cannot be a regular person, uh, officer that you start paying for their volunteers. Mm. Yeah, so but w one volunteer with time the impurity is mm. going to impede the person's, uh, you know, uh, uh, oneness or wholeness to really do the job in question. Yes, but you know that we have good Nigerians mm. who are ready to make impact, to train the suit, even with their own resources. So the most important thing is recognizing them and appreciating mm. them as philanthropists. So we have a lot of them. Why people hide out is because no, nobody wants to respond to them. Nobody wants to recognize them. Even if they do, they are not recognized. But this one is a body where you come in, you are recognized, <coughs> we give you a word. We, we, some, of, some of those who have been with us, they also, we, are, we are also help them to get grandparents to the United Nations to go there. So, so if you have, you have the means to take care of this youth, get them out of the street, and we recognize you by linking it with people we are related to, and you have, you are recognized even in the United Nations. Yeah, you see a lot of people come out to do that. So volunteerism is one, one important area that we are not looking at. And that is why I see in Nigeria today, everybody wants to do anything, wants to put money first, which is very wrong. It is very wrong. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I've been having the chat uh, with uh, the Deputy National uh, commandant, a uh, Nigerian Peace Corps in charge of training and board again and operations, uh, just to uh, throw more light on the Peace Corps question and tackling insecurity. Uh, talking about uh, Oyemike, MD Oyemike. Hope I got that name yeah. all right. So, uh, finally, what advice do you have for the youth? that are being pressured into crime because of what they are going through economically, uh, socially, even psychologically, from your own perspective? Yeah, one the, my advice to Nigerian youth is let us eschew this issue of quick money. There is dignity in long suffering. Mm. Because when you struggle and uh, to get what you want, you value it, you, you spend it with 
dignity, with respect. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say you are, you, you are looking for a job that you don't have peace of mind, you see everybody as threat, you see police, you are not comfortable. Mm -hmm. It is not the right way to go. Let us come in and do that's that long suffering the face the job don't let us not do no, many don't, don't want to hear that no. long suffering like it's not my portion, yes, yes, not my portion. Right and, now. and that is where, where the problem comes yeah. in because if people are supposed to lead us tomorrow they evade suffering want to quick money and the, the way you spend it lavishly you see people spending money popping using more even bundle of money spraying it mm. pouring it everywhere that is debasing our fine our even economy mm. because one you have we the people some like America if you see the way they respect their dollars, you don't use it anyhow. But here you just do the party because you don't get it. You All don't right. struggle for it. All so right. let our youth face uh, long suffering and let us at least the dignity of labor is very important. Thank you, thank you so so much for the commander, the Nigerian youth uh, Peace uh, Corps. Nigerian Peace Corps. Well you've heard him, uh, the only aspect is to orientate is to talk to is to re-establish or say recycle the mindset of most especially the youth like a preventive Chief. measure Measures. so they won't jump into crime let's up and pray that um, the bill will be passed into law by mr president once more appreciate your presence thank you, thank you so so thank much you. for coming if you just joined us this is a tmi itv network we'll go on a break we'll definitely be right back don't go away <laughs>